boat has actually been in the um, in the design process at Maverick, Maverick for a couple of years now. It just sort of fell in the line of projects and now just come out. But all along the criteria, design and criteria is just primarily about building a boat that allows a very serious fisherman to do everything, right? That there's not going to be a day where he cannot go fishing, okay, because it's flowing too hard offshore or something like that. So you have, you know, some of the big design criteria, we want to make sure the boat floated shallow but still had a big open water hull on it. So we have the big, the boat's 26.2, it's also 8.10, so very roomy. Big open water hull, big bow flare um, to keep you dry, carried it back into a, a double step. We introduced our 23 HPS Pathfinder three years ago. That boat has a really good following with a lot of tournament angles to cover a lot of big weather really fast. We wanted to build on that, add an extra step into the, into this boat. The boat is also deeper. It's 27 inches of exterior floor right here at midships. Um, carry back into the bustle transom back here to keep that clean water from the step coming back. The boat comes standard with the jack plate. Wanted to design it so that we could put a big engine on the back of it like a 300. We also have a 350 that can go on the boat as well. Um, the boat with the 300 uh, without a top, cheat, hard top on it. Uh, it has an 80 gallon fuel tank in it, but with 40 gallons of fuel, it runs just about 60 miles per hour. What's really neat, tells you how efficient the hull is, starts running square right at about 3,000 RPM. So you run about 29 miles per hour. From there on up, you start climbing 3,500 RPMs at 39 miles per hour and on up. So super efficient hull. Um, like we said, we wanted a boat that basically allows you to fish everywhere every day. So we sort of broke this out in two pieces. We have a big core deck here where obviously you're going to be doing a lot of inshore fishing. This is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Uh, what's nice about this is you have a bunch of rooms, all that stuff, but you have everything you need up forward here to inshore fish and not have to go back to the back of the boat to get things. You have a forward 15 gallon live well, okay, so you're not having to run back and forth to get the bait. You have a nice big storage box here. As with all pathfinders, gas shock lids, deep lid trough, gasketed, okay. And then right here, this is a really nice out of touch, 80 gallon fish box, okay. It'll also be used as dry storage, but you can have it macerated, or even if it's not macerated, you have a, you have a sea cock down in this uh, hatch here that allow you to drain that, okay. So, Another big thing, we're talking about fishing every day, so that means it's going to be able to accommodate big conventional tackle, uh, nine foot fly rods, eight pound spinners, everything. So we're very particular about the rod boxes, great big rod boxes, really wide openings. Um, you know, I've been on enough boats where it's just an absolute hassle to use, kind of use these rod boxes. If the, if the openings are really small, you end up tearing up the guides, all that kind of stuff. This is really easy to get the rods in and out. You can actually fish out of these boxes, you know what I'm saying, get the rods quickly in and out where a lot of boxes, once you put those rods in there, they stay in there or they come out. So these you can actually use. There's, there's rod racks on either side, but you can also pop, pop them down in the bottom. They're also deep enough in here you guys can get up and have a look um, where you could put a, a five gallon bucket in there with a cast net. Speaking of a cast net, we also have a floor locker here for a cast net. Also provides you access to the fish box where you're going to have your sea cock you can cut it on and off. That's where your macerator is as well. Boat comes standard, gel match cooler. Um, this is a new feature for us, new hard top, um, really stylish looking piece, bunch of storage for and aft, you know, the LED lights, all that kind of stuff. Something that's sort of neat, we're talking about how much we focused on rod storage. A lot of times we have the hard tops, it precludes you from doing any kind of console rod racks. Here we have this groove in here, we padded that, we made, made sure it was big enough to be able to put big spinner guides through. Up above this, um, there's a drip edge, so any water that falls on this side is going to come around, be routed, and fall off. Obviously, water will fall straight down through here, but in our opinion, that's a small price to pay to be able to still use rod storage on the side of the console. Pretty much typical Pathfinder console, real well laid out, put big electronics in here. You have the tow kick, allows us to get lighting up underneath. You guys see that all lit up. Allows you to sit with, tuck up underneath or get your foot pad, nice glove box here, LED light, switch panel, all that. On this boat, um, we're offering this deluxe helm seat standard, okay? 
You can also get it with a live well leaning post in the boat um, as, a, as a third live well. Uh, this is a, a really nice, comfortable piece. Also, yeah, the, your battery switches right here, they're really accessible. You have two separate switches and breakers there for your main house battery, and then also your 36 volt trolling motor system. Something I didn't mention, I forgot, speaking of trolling motor, up here, tell me, I, did, I didn't mention the trolling motor, did I? No. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the primary design criteria. On my little notes, I had big stars all around that. I missed that. So. But this boat, that, that was a big deal. And working with Darren Roof, our naval architect, I just saw Darren here. That was the primary design consideration. We absolutely had to have this boat work well with the trolling motor. And I don't mean work well in calm conditions. I mean work well offshore chasing tarpon and that kind of stuff in a beach shop. So 60-inch shaft trolling motor, eye pilot. Does exceptionally well on this. We've already done it. We did the 36 volt, 100 pound thrust. So that's um, something that we absolutely had to have. We, this is not about. Uh, this boat is about serious fishing. All right. And, and, and the floor, another floor storage box. This is where we're going to have our batteries. Put four batteries in here. Um, that whole console area is completely wide open in there. There's a, there's tackle storage up in front of that like we did before, but you can put your batteries in here. We're also working on something where you're going to be able to get your batteries in there as well. All right. So on the back end for those offshore days, um, big open area here, 48 gallon live well. Okay, it has an 1100 series pump in it. So we're going to flush a lot of water through here. That's a dual inflow um, and drain system, restart pump in it and also aerator, but this thing is, is massive. Right. Storage, more storage, either side here like this, sorry, Chris, or the other side. Is that a release well? You can plumb that as a release well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There it is right there. And then rigging storage right here. Very clean, easy to get everything. This bustle transit is really nice because it pulls all the rigging back from the engine and really makes it nice and accessible. There. All right, but we really feel like we, we've got something here in a boat that, you know, a guy can basically down here um, call his buddy, look at the weather forecast, call his buddy from Atlanta and say, come on down next weekend. You know, it looks like it's going to be 5 to 10 off the beach. We'll go catch sailfish. Okay, the weather switches, a subtopical front comes through, something like that. It's going 15 to 20 out of the northeast. The guy's still coming, he can take him and fish flamingo all day. You know, and that's what this boat can really do, which which we feel is really unique. Alright? Any questions?